You've probably heard about a million different lawsuits for just as many different things. So let's take that into the world of video games and talk about 10 people who sued video game makers. Number 10. In 2004, award-winning screenwriter Roger Avery put together a lawsuit against Microsoft for supposedly stealing his idea for what he called a virtual yoga studio. Now, like I said, Roger Avery is not some hack. He's an Academy Award-winning screenwriter and got the Best Screenplay Oscar for Pulp Fiction. So here's the weirdest part about this. The game Roger sued over was called Your Self Fitness, and it was not published by Microsoft, it was published by Respond Design. The head of Respond Design, Ted Spooner, said the claims are completely false and that Microsoft did not even participate in the development of the product. Avery says Respond Design was founded after his meetings with Microsoft and that its founder had a long prior history with Microsoft, which I don't know. It sounds like a couple logic jumps to me. Number 9. A mobster's daughter is suing Rockstar for Grand Theft Auto 5 saying it supposedly copies her life story. Karen Gravano says that character, Antonia Bottino, is basically a ripoff of her life. Where she's the daughter of the mobster who brought down John Gotti, Antonia Bottino is the daughter of Sammy Bottino, who has never seen, but his story is told by Antonia. Sammy, according to her, was the underboss of the Gabetti family, and had been the right-hand man of the boss, John Gravelli. Bottino took his family in hiding after being set up on murder charges in Vice City. The lawsuit itself doesn't allege that Karen Gravano was ever kidnapped by one of her dad's old enemies or threatened to be buried alive, which the character in the game does. In fact, the player is in charge of thwarting the whole scheme, and you have to go dig her up because she was buried alive. And if the lawsuit doesn't say specifically that that came from her life, it probably didn't happen in her life. Number eight, Electronic Arts actually lost a lawsuit because they used code and features developed by the designer of the very first John Madden on Madden games published in the mid-90s and did not credit him or pay him anything for it. The ruling was that EA actually had to pay Robin Antonick bare minimum of $11 million and could in theory go a lot higher than that, including royalties that they did not pay him. Now Robin Antonick being a programmer, the original John Madden that he worked on came out in 1998 and his name was on the cover of the game. Antonick had been talking about this for a long time and Trip Hawkins, the series creator and actually one of the founders of EA had even stated that Antonick had really overstated his own importance to the series development. But guess what? The chickens came home to roost on that one. You don't screw people in that way. Number seven. A 64-year-old woman sued the company NCSoft over an item in the game Lineage. When you try to enchant in-game items, you either obviously upgrade the item, or if you're unsuccessful, the item just disappears. This lady tried to enchant a sword that was actually worth $28,000 in the resale market. That's right. In this online game, a sword was so rare and so good that if you got on Craigslist and said, I've got a conduct sword and I'm charging $28,000 for it, somebody else would go, I'll buy it. In the lawsuit, the woman claimed she accidentally tried to enchant the sword and added that she would never actively try to enchant a $28,000 item. She was actually trying to enchant an item that was worth considerably less, but accidentally enchanted Jin Mwing Hung's conduct sword. And NCSoft refused to restore the item, so she filed suit. Number six, the author of a novel called Link by the name of John Bazewinger sued Ubisoft. Basically, he alleges that because his book was about a system that could access the memories of one's ancestors, that Assassin's Creed ripped that off. Now, here's the problem. He didn't say that they used his book as the basis of Assassin's Creed. He said they directly copied and knowingly infringed on the whole of his copyrighted work. Now, see, that's a bit of a problem. Link is not about telling Templars versus Assassins, and it is not set in Italy. Now, making the assumption that somebody at Ubisoft did read his book, it's because of the way he worded it that there's absolutely no chance he will even possibly get anything out of it, because frankly, that's ridiculous. The overarching plots of both Assassin's Creed and the book Link are not similar. Number five, General George S. Patton died in December of 1945. He was also a huge World War II hero, and being a figure of history, one might think that, well, well, it might make sense to put him in a game about World War II. The game Legends of War Patton has him in it, and a firm representing the deceased is attempting to sue them for the depiction of a historical figure. Honestly, this is kind of a dick move. The man died in 1945, and his life is a matter of historical significance, not recent historical significance either. Number four, Square Enix of America was sued for allegedly deceiving 100,000 customers for unfair business practices, false advertising, and unjust 
just enrichment regarding Final Fantasy XI. And if you think that that's kind of a weird term, here's basically the problem. The lawsuit claims that Square Enix lied or concealed its monthly fees, penalties for late payments, interest, restrictions, and other things that would have fully been disclosed at points of purchase, which essentially amounts to Square Enix being liars, or at least deceptive. Number four, EA got sued over a tattoo that appeared on the cover of a video game, particularly NFL Street. Now, here's the problem. When people do art on commission, they're typically aware that they don't have any control on what it's used for. Alan is claiming that you can copyright tattoo work. And I'm somebody who is seriously like, okay, I don't care what you're doing. The artist 99.999% of the time is getting screwed by the company. Number three, the developers of Kane and Lynch were sued for defaming Chinese people. This is kind of a weird one because the lawyer basically indicated he doesn't care if they win or not. He said, as a Chinese lawyer, I have an obligation to protect the rights of all Chinese. My worry is not whether I can win the case, but whether the court will put it on record. So he thinks that it has so little going on that he's concerned the court will even record it. I mean, I get it. The game is set in Shanghai and it doesn't really depict it very well, and it doesn't really depict the people in it very well either, but I kind of think most games do that. Number two, an Xbox Live user sued Microsoft for $500 billion, or basically a shitload of Microsoft points. So this guy found what he considered to be a loophole in terms of service, a technicality if you will, that the Xbox Live TOS actually says that he can unilaterally amend the TOS unless Microsoft rejects his terms in writing. Now the terms that he decided to inject into it regarded him getting paid $500 billion. And the number one lawsuit against the video game maker that I want to talk about today is somebody suing Sony because Killzone multiplayer wasn't 1080p. Yeah, if you buy Killzone, it says that it's 1080p, and the game in single player does run in native 1080p. And in multiplayer, it does something called temporal reprojection, which, stay with me on this one, combines pixels and motion vectors from previous frames to reconstruct a full 1080p image. I mean, this is just a weird one because the technique used does produce a pretty good looking image that, I don't know, seems to be 1080p. I mean, it may not be traditional 1080p and it may not be what people expected, but it's definitely not 720p. It's just kind of a weird way of doing 1080p that is not necessarily native, but the box itself doesn't say native 1080p, it just says 1080p. And it's just really hard for me to go, yeah, that makes it that makes a lot of sense. Do that lawsuit. That's exactly what you should do. Unless they're going to try to sue to get the disclosure of technique on how you get a certain resolution on every box of every game. Because honestly, if that is on the box of a game, because it has to be, that's just stupid. Anyway, did any of these strike you as particularly weird? That last one is just like, I don't even know where to begin processing it. It's just dumb. Leave a comment on what you think. And don't forget to click the like button because it helps us a ton. Also, if you're not subscribed, now's a great time for that. On account, we upload new videos every single day and the best way to see them first is a subscription. As always, thank you so much for watching this video and we will see you next time here on Game Ranks.